This is Corey Knight, the guy who is an avid kayaker with Classroom Tech Made Simple. And in today's video tutorial, we're going to talk about an app called TinyTap. TinyTap is an app that is available through the App Store. There also are some web-based capabilities that you can utilize as a teacher. But it is a game-based learning app. It's 100% free. Students can search for games and create their own games that are associated with a specific topic, concept, or idea. Students and teachers will both have access to the TinyTap library of thousands of concepts and ideas across every discipline. I was just researching and going through all of this through the TinyTap library, and I literally found so much information and content across all disciplines. I was very impressed with this. Now, according to Web's depth of knowledge, this is going to be a level three or even a level four extended thinking type of activity. When you have your students plan ahead and create games, they really have to think about their processes as they go through and create these games. They have to think way far ahead and they need to have an extended planning process as they create these games. So there's definitely potential for this to be the level three and level four web step of knowledge that we're looking for. So the outcome from this tutorial, we're going to create an account. We're going to talk about the app functionality and how TinyTap works. It can be kind of tricky. So I'm going to guide you through the whole functionality of TinyTap. I'm going to show you how to create awesome TinyTap games for your class, no matter what the age level. And I'm also going to give you some tips on how to get your students excited about creating TinyTap games. TinyTap is kind of one of those apps that is for the lower grade levels, but I can give you guys potential ideas on how you can get middle school and even high school students involved in using TinyTap. I'm also going to share with you the Pro account and the Insights account. These are the paid versions of TinyTap, and they do have some potential uses, but you can definitely just get away with the free account with TinyTap. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with TinyTap. Okay, so we're at the App Store. Okay, so there's one thing I want to share with you. You're going to notice that TinyTap is an app that is rated for kids 6 through 8. So I always get the question, how can I get my middle school student, my high school student, to utilize TinyTap in a way that is going to benefit their learning. And I always respond by saying, teachers need to put students in the role of a teacher and give them the opportunity to create games for students that are younger than them, putting them in that driver's seat of being the expert on a concept or idea where they're going to present information and actually teach younger students. So that's the easiest way. Usually students respond to that very well and they take on that role and they really enjoy creating these tiny tap games for younger students. So go ahead and download tiny tap and then we'll log in, uh, we'll create an account and I'll show you what tiny tap really is and then we're going to go into how to create our own tiny tap game. When you open up tiny tap it's going to give you this welcome screen and it's going to give you some directions on what to do. It's going to show you how to start exploring and how to create. You can either go through this or I'm going to hit this X in the upper left hand corner. It's going to want to personalize the learning experience for you. So you're just going to click whether you're a teacher, parent, or student. And then click the next button. And then it's going to give you the opportunity to sign up. So you can either click the join tiny tap. Or if you already have a username and login, go ahead and do that now. Twice and then it's going to give you the option to personalize your learning experience. So I always just choose English and I choose all ages. And then you're going to click let's go. This is the main dashboard for tiny tap. You can see at the bottom here, we're in the Discover page right now. If you want to hit the Play button, well, I'll show you what that is in a little bit. The Create, the Feed, and then your Profile. If ever you want to change the age that all of these tiny taps are, you just click in the upper right-hand corner, and you can click the different age-appropriate lessons that you want presented to your students. You can also search these lessons as well in the upper part of the screen. So all those are available. You're going to notice that all the subjects are going to be all across this banner right here. So I'm kind of impartial to science, I'm a science teacher, so I'm gonna show you what a science lesson looks like. You have these different subjects within science across the top here, you can always change those if you'd like. Um, if you wanna go back, you just click on science and you can click different subjects if you'd like as well. So I'm gonna start by showing you this tiny tap project on the solar system. Okay, so there's gonna be one of three screens that show up whenever you're looking at tiny tap games. This one is specifically a course, so it's 
four different tiny tap games or tiny tap lessons put together. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, if you look at a specific topic, let's go to say earth science and you look at one that isn't a course, I'm going to click on this one that says solar system. You will get this option where it says play the play button with pro. And what that means is you have to sign up for the pro account, which is a free trial. And then you have to pay $4.99 a month. That's one of the ways that tiny tap monetizes their app and their system of learning. This one, on the other hand, does not have the pro icon next to the play button. So this one is a free tiny tap available for all users. Okay, so we're going to go back to uh, that solar system course. And I'm going to show you what tiny tap really is. So when you're going to click the start button, you can either join or you can log in. If you haven't created an account, you're going to want to click join. It's going to give you um, the option to create your login information to TinyTap. While I log in, I'm going to have you go ahead and create your account. After you log in, it's going to advertise to sign up for the pro account. You have a free month of trial, and then it's $4.99 per month afterwards. This isn't necessary, but if you want to, feel free to go ahead and sign up for the pro account. Okay, so we're back here with the solar system, and this is a unit. The only thing that you need to do is just click the start button and it is going to download this unit. Hello, welcome to my quiz on the solar system. Please go to the next page and circle the answer that you think is correct. What is the closest planet to the sun? Yes, that's correct. Mercury is the right. planet to the sun, followed by Venus, Earth, Mars, etc. What is the hottest planet in our solar system? Oh, I got that one wrong. That's wrong. Try again. No, sorry. Try again. Which is the largest gas giant? Yes, that's correct. All right, got that one right, too. Composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. What planet is known as the red planet? Yes, Mars is known as the red planet because of the iron dioxide provolted on its surface gives it the reddish appearance. What is the biggest planet in our solar system? Yes, Jupiter is the biggest planet. It has the largest surface by the mass. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the home screen now that you've seen how a tiny tap game works. And this is the main dashboard again. Next, I'm going to show you how to create your own tiny tap game. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to create our own tiny tap game. So you're going to want to hit the create button in the middle of the bottom banner at the bottom of the screen. This is going to give you your blank canvas. Now on the left hand side, they give you these different options called creation packs. And it's just different layouts, it's different colors, shapes, um, different things that you can choose, you can add to your tiny tap game. So maybe you're creating some sort of quiz show. Click on the quiz show. It gives you these different shapes um, and things that you can use for your tiny tap game. So these creation packs are filled with all kinds of different interactive pictures that you can use in your tiny tap game. Um, they have anything from animated icons to even comic book stuff. So they have all kinds of different stuff that you can use. So if you click on the comics, uh, maybe you're going to have your students create some sort of storyboard. You can click one of those storyboard pictures right there. They're going to create a storyboard about, um, who knows, something that you want them to write. Uh, they can add these different pictures from either the internet or they can use this search bar, uh, which is located right here. So they can, they can search for images online by using that button right there. But for right now, I'm gonna delete this picture. If you double tap any of the images, you can use these different options where you can send it to the back. You can remove the white, you can flip it, blur it, duplicate it, but I'm gonna delete it for right now. If you ever wanna access those creation packs, you just click on the smiley face right here and it will show you those different creation packs. 
Some of them are animated. Some of them are just simple shapes. Some of them are science specific, tech specific. They have stickers, all kinds of different stuff. Okay, but I'm going to start with a blank canvas. Maybe I want to create some sort of game regarding the parts of speech. So I have two options that I can do here. I can either type out some sort of text just by clicking the text feature and it's going to give you all these different features across the banner of the top of the keyboard just like you would in a normal Word document. If you want to delete that, you just click the delete button. If you wanted to draw something, it gives you this palette to draw. You can add all kinds of different colors. It gives you these different pens, markers, crayons, and then different colors as well. If you want to add a picture from your camera roll, you just click the camera. It's going to ask you to access your camera and your microphone. You're going to want to allow TinyTap to access both of those so that you can have the full function of the TinyTap app. Okay, so I'm going to make something about the parts of speech. So I'm going to tap this eyeglass. This is just so that you can search throughout. Um, I think it actually uses Google along with some other search engines. And I'm just going to try to search parts of speech. And I'm looking for some sort of picture. And I just go through and I'm going to click one of these pictures right here. So now I have this picture here. I'm doing this as the most basic way possible. So I'm going to encourage you guys after I show you this and how to use this and the function of this app to go through and look at different tiny tap games and then kind of play it around with it yourself before you start utilizing it in the classroom. So if I want to resize this, I can just pinch or reverse pinch. So maybe I'm going to put this over here on the side and then say that I'm going to create a quick quiz for my students. So I'm going to type in a sentence. The frog jumped into the pond. And I'm going to resize this. I can do that just by reverse pinching and then I can tilt it as well. If you need to edit, you just double tap. And I'm going to create a question. Identify the noun or nouns in the following sentence. I'm going to drag that up here. So I've set up my game. Now I want to add an activity. So I click the add activity, click the next button, and I have all of these different activities. So I can either ask a question, talk or type, create a soundboard, cut a shape puzzle. I can play a video straight from YouTube. I can add that to one of these. Um, or you can have it say something. Um, kind of think of this as creating a interactive slideshow as well. So I'm just going to ask a question. I'm going to record that question. Identify the noun or nouns in the following sentence. And I hit the stop button. And then I'm going to circle the nouns in this sentence. Hit the check mark. And then I can add additional questions or I can just click done. For me to check out my question that I just created, I just click back on here. Now I can do the same thing for the same picture. All I have to do is just click add slide. And I can go back and I can duplicate or create another completely different activity. If I want to delete that, I just click the delete button. Up here you're going to want to title your game. And then you're going to click done. Now it's going to ask you to keep your game safe on the TinyTap Cloud. You have to add a description. You have to select the category. And then save game. It's going to ask you to sign in if you haven't already. And then you can share your parts of speech game or it even gives you the option for teachers to sell your activity, which not many of them get purchased, but there is an opportunity for you to make money on some of these, which is kind of nice. When you hit the X button, 
This is where I'm, I'm currently in the play section. And I'm going to click on the parts of speech. Identify the noun or nouns in the following sentence. The bad thing about this is that I only created um, one of them. There was only one correct answer. Okay. So what will happen is TinyTap automatically will start adding new games to this. So you got to make sure that you click off the Smart Play up in the upper right hand corner or it's just going to continue to play different games uh, that it chooses for you. Now before we end I'm going to log in and I'm going to show you one of the games that I made with my science class about using uh, different parts of the metric system and different measurements. So I'm going to show you that real quick. And it was specifically about length, volume, and mass. And I'm just going to show you what I did with this game so that you have a better idea of what you can do with TinyTap. Okay, so I asked where the ruler is 5.7 centimeters. And in this one, I made a game where what measurement is the arrow pointing to? 7.7. I put triple beam balance practice where students had to uh, type in the answer to what the uh, reading of the triple beam balance was. And then right there, it gives me my results. And that is tiny tap. So it is kind of complicated when you first start. You may get a little overwhelmed, uh, but it is a great app. I'm going to go back to that Discover page where all those different uh, tiny taps are available to you. If you have any questions, always feel free to contact me. Remember, you can get your high school and middle school students involved with tiny tap. You have to get them excited about creating these games for younger learners and kind of putting them in that driver's seat of being the teacher for those younger learners. So uh, I hope that you learned something. Make sure that you definitely try out TinyTap before utilizing it in your classroom. And if you have any questions, like always, you can always contact me at Corey at classroomtechmadesimple.com. We'll see you guys next video.